Okay, so immunology. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to step out of character with this one, and I'm going to review for about 45 minutes or so, I'm going to review the immune system, only because this is probably the worst, um, or not the worst, but the most uh, painstaking system there is in the body for most students. So I, I know you've got an A and P2. I would hope that you got a little bit taste of it with microbiology, and for students who haven't taken microbiology, you will. So this is like your third time going through it. Um, but you really understand, uh, need to understand this to understand the, the how HIV works and stuff. So, um, uh, so let's uh, let's do this, and then uh, like I said, about 45 minutes of review if we could handle that. Okay. Um, okay, so the immune system. So let's just talk about the lymphatic system, what it does, and how it intervenes with the immune system. So let me just jump ahead to a third slide here before I get back to this, a fourth slide. Okay. This is what the immune system does. And everything I'm going to explain is going to be on the slides before this, so I'm going to go back. Your heart is going to pump blood, and what happens is, this is your interstitial tissue. The way physics works, and you learn this in electro, fluids and electrolytes, and we'll do, over, we'll do a little bit more about it um, in, a, in a few weeks. But what happens here is that the fluid, not the red blood cells, not the blood itself, but the liquid of the blood, the way that the pressures are, and you've got oncotic pressure or, or osmotic pressure, and you also have hydrostatic pressure, the combination to that will mean that the fluid is going to be pushed into the interstitial tissue and it'll go right back in. It's kind of like, like a wave and then it comes right back in just because of those pressures. But what's happening here is this. If 30 liters goes out into interstitial tissue, you would expect 30 liters to come back. That's not what happens. Because of the physics, 30 liters goes out but only 27 liters comes back in. That leaves three liters sitting in the interstitial area. Now, if it stays there, it will be, you'll be bloated, right? That's edema. The fluid just builds up. So we've got to have a mechanism to get that fluid back to the heart. Now, when I say fluid, it's that water that comes out, the plasma, so to say, right? You have water, you have bacteria, because those are little things to get through, bacteria, viruses, even cancer cells can maybe squeeze through there, okay? Um, you have all the ions, the oxygen gases, the carbon dioxide gases, the hormones, all that can go through. Big things can't get through, like red blood cells. So red blood cells don't go out here, okay? So it's like a wash. 30 liters goes that way, 27 liters can come back into the bloodstream, even 3 liters here. So what happens at a 3 liters? This is where the lymphatics are. That's what they're there for. And the lymphatic system is what I consider the customs of the body. When you leave the America and you want to come back, you've got to go through customs. You've got to make sure that you're not bringing back drugs and knives and guns and all that stuff. Well, when the fluid goes this way, it's got to go through customs. And these little custom areas are called lymph nodes. A spleen and a tonsil is just a big glorified lymph node. All right? These lymph nodes, the spleen, are just customs. That's what they are. As you would see at the airport. So if that fluid wants to come back, you're going to have to go through customs. And in there, <coughs> the customs, we have the white blood cells. We've got all those mast cells. We've got all those things that are going to look through that fluid coming back, making sure there's no bacteria. If there's bacteria, the lymph nodes will take care of them. If there's cancer cells, we're going to get rid of them. If there's viruses, we're going to get rid of them. So that all the clean, sterile blood can get through here. Or not blood, but the, the fluid, the lymphatic fluid. And that'll go back into the bloodstream. Does that make sense? Right? That's how, that's the purpose, or one of the purposes of the lymphatic system. It goes this way, and most of it will go back in here. Eventually, that fluid will go into here and it'll go through customs, maybe the second time around. Okay? but it'll be a wash out and a wash in, but we've got three liters that need to go through the lymphatics, and we'll look for those areas, okay? Um, yep, that's no problem. All right, questions?
questions on that? All right. This is what we're going to deal with with the immune system because the immune system is going to the lymph nodes are going to look at all that stuff. We got to talk about how to get rid of it. Let's go back now to this. Okay. So the lymphatic system. Okay. Is these we have these lymphatic vessels that are connected to many organs. These lymphatic organs, the lymph nodes, and so forth. Okay. And they're going to check the body and the lymph is that interstitial fluid that has to go back to the, the heart by way of blood vessels. Eventually it'll get back in there. Okay? So <coughs> the way it's set up, the, we have lymph nodes all over our body. But they're going to concentrate in certain areas. It's like people are all over the country. But we have a lot more people in Chicago, Los Angeles, <coughs> New York, and Boston. Right? But you go to Oklahoma, there's people there, but not as much. right? So the same way here, we have lymph nodes all over the body, but they're going to concentrate more in the inguinal area, in the groin, in the axillary, artery, or axillary uh, area, the armpits, and also the neck. So those are really the three biggest areas where we're going to see a lot of lymph nodes. Also, and this picture doesn't really do justice, but if you can visualize this, when you look at it on the PowerPoint, you'll see it better. The body's not split up in how the fluid is going back to the heart in terms of lymphatics. It's not 50-50. It's actually 25-75. I'll show you. If you look at it close, this area here, the right side of the head, the right arm, and the right torso, all right, it's like a greenish color over here. This area here and the right arm, that's 25% of lymphatics will actually drain into the subclavian, the right subclavian vein. The other 75%, so the left side of the torso, including the arm, and both legs. All right, so here, 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 they will all drain in the left subclavian vein. So what's the significance of this? Do you see it? I mean, it's, it's kind of a greenish color here. When you look on the, 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 the slides, it'll, it'll look better. So you have 25% get drained into the right subclavian. The other 75% get drained into the left subclavian vein going back to the heart, like I showed you before, okay? That's what's written over here. Well, the reason, now here's the significance. If you have breast cancer, the cancer is going to go into the right axillary lymph nodes. That kind of makes sense. If you have left breast, ca breast cancer, they'll drain into the the, the, the cells will drain into the left axillary lymph node. Makes sense. The left, if you have, let's say, testicular cancer, so this side, the left side will drain into the left. The right side will drain into the left, but it's going to eventually go to that area. Does that make sense? So the groin, the lymph nodes that are in the right groin, are going to eventually drain into the left subclavian vein. So if a surgeon needs to follow where they're going, if he needs to see how far the, the, the cancer metastasized, he's going to check here and here. He's not going to check over here. It doesn't get through there. Does that make sense? So that's the significance to understand that. Okay? Um, so these are just other organs and tonsils and spleen. Like I said, they're glorified <coughs> lymph nodes. They're just bigger lymph nodes. There are a few other, the spleen has a few other things it does. It breaks the red blood cells and so forth. But it, it's a glorified lymph node, okay? And these are basically the lymph nodes, as I said again, is the customs. You want to come back into the country, we're going to need to make sure that there's no bacteria, cancer cells, and so forth. The problem is, is there's so much that the lymph nodes can actually take on. If it gets overwhelmed with a lot of cancer cells, then the cancer can start spreading in that lymph node, and lymph node enlarge. That's why your lymph nodes enlarge, not because it's just cancer, but, you know, if they're doing a lot of work, the white blood cells are doing a lot of work in the lymph nodes, they enlarge, right? If customs is, has a lot of 
immigrants, or not immigrants, but people coming into the States, whether you're American or not, they're going to get overwhelmed and it's going to be very busy. And think of it being slow. That's what's happening here until your body can uh, do away with the, uh, with the cancer, whatever it is. Unfortunately, sometimes the cancer is just too overwhelming and it spreads and it stays in the, in the lymph nodes. And that's like a different stage, which we'll get into. Okay? Does that make sense about the lymphatics and what's happening? Okay. So the functions, like I said, 30 liters goes uh, from the capillaries into interstitial tissue. 27 liters returns to the veins, with the remaining three liters has to go through the lymphatic, and it's going to look through that uh, to see if there's any bacteria and whatnot. Other functions you learn in the GI tract with the lax peels and how fat absorption occurs. Um, those are modified um, lymphatic black peels. I don't want to go too much into that. Um, and then, of course, as I mentioned, uh, defense, right? So we have to deal with the custom. So not only is fluid going into the interstitial area, and we got to get back that three liters, that's one function, but also as it comes back, we're going to be able to look through that to make sure there's no bacteria, viruses, cancer cells to destroy that stuff, okay? All right. Uh, and what's in the lymph with the plasma and the cells? Those, like I said before, just um, know what's in there. Should be a little bit of a review. Okay, so let's talk about the immune system. Now we know where these things happen in lymph nodes and stuff. So now let's talk about what is this immune system? So things will come into the body, right? Foreign things will come into the body. So self versus non self. And we're going to talk all about this, but. Your body has to determine, is it a friend or is it a foe, right? Is it something that you can recognize? We're not going to destroy it. You know, we're going to just, if we recognize it, we could, you know, it's yourself, so we'll ignore it. Or is it something that's new that we have to do something about? We've got to attack it. And cancer cells or tumor cells are actually foreign, but they're made internal. So they're non-self that's actually made inside the body. Whereas, let's say, bacteria and viruses... That's non-self, but it comes from outside the body. Okay. Like we talked about before, the three lines of defense, right? We have the picket fence that's protecting your house. That's our first line of defense. Then we have if a burglar goes through there, um, or a Tilly, or a mailman. Then we have the dog, right? The, the, the guard dog is going to bark, 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 kind of thing. Um, and that's, but, <coughs> me, remind, but remember, the, the picket fence will ward off good and bad people. The dog barking will ward off good and bad people. So this is non-specific. these first two mechanisms. The third mechanism, the master comes out of the house, Fido, what are you barking about? Oh, it's Aunt Tilly, just lick her leg, it's fine, right? You know, or keep them barking, I'm going to call up, that's a burglar. So now that master is going to call up 911. That 911 is your dispatcher, and that dispatcher is going to determine what's your, you know, what's the reason for your call. We have a burglar here. Okay, that means I need to bring the police there, not the fire department, right? I need to bring the police there, not the ambulance. So that dispatcher, which we're going to talk about who that is in this whole immune system, is a key person, probably the key person of the whole thing. If you call up and there's no answer, the burglar's going to do his own thing, the fire's going to keep on going, and the person's going to have to die of a heart attack. That dispatcher is key. And that's what HIV kills. Very smart. It kills the dispatcher, knowing that nothing else could get over there. Okay? So this is just to show you another picture. Our first line of defense is things like skin. All right? Um, so... Bacteria and things can get, uh, if it does, it's going to do the majority. If it gets through there, then we got, then that's the picket fence. Here's our Fido the dog. Hopefully that'll get rid of the rest of it. But if something still can get through, then we're going to have the acquired immune uh, system, which is over here. Okay? Most cases we could get rid of, that's why we're not sick all the time, because we usually have these things taking care of everything. It's just when they get through here, we tend to get sick. Okay? All right, so immunology broken up into two things, right? We have the innate or natural or the nonspecific. Those are your physical barriers like your skin, 
chemical barriers, soluble mediators, inflammatory response, those five cardinal signs we talked about, right, your tears, uh, you have antibiotics that's in your earwax, see all these different things that are going on, but they're non-specific. it'll ward off good and bad things. But then you've got the acquired or adaptive where they have to go further um, to do this. And this is basically broken down into two things, either anti dealing with antibodies, which is what we call humoral, and that's a B cell is doing it, or the non-antibodies, which is going to be just cell mediated, and that's going to be done by the T cell. Okay? T cells mature where? Thymus. Good. B cells mature where? Bone marrow, bingo, okay? All right, so bone marrow and T, that's where the B and the T come from, okay? <coughs> they all come from the bone marrow, but they mature in the thymus and, it all, and the B cells mature in the bone marrow, okay? So this is the natural immunity, all the different parts to it. We'll go over a few things. I'm not gonna go over a lot. I mean, I, I can't do that just for like 45 minutes. And then the adaptive. Believe it or not, this is easier to manage than this one. This one drives people nuts. All right, this one leads to this, and tells that one to do this, and releases chemicals, and this, and all this. Oh, it's, it's really good. This one's not so bad. Okay, this is more like terminology. But we'll, we'll do that one first, and we'll talk about this. So let's talk about the innate immunity. Okay, just some things. I'm assuming you know this all, but just a quick review, all right? You have, this is non-immune, or I'm sorry, um, non-specific. So physical barriers you have there, that's your skin, your tears, um, the earwax, those kind of things, physical kind of barriers, all right? Um, also the, the stomach acid, right? There's acid in your stomach, not many things can live in, in a low pH. So that's another thing that falls into there. Phagocytes, we talked about those, that phagocytize around certain things and uh, break them up. Uh, we have natural killer cells, which we'll talk about too. They're, they're non-specific lymphocytes. B cells and T cells are lymphocytes, but we do have another group of, T, uh, another group of lymphocytes that are called natural killer cells, and these fall into the non-specific part of the immune system. We have interferons. Interferons is, is basically this. The burglar comes through the picket fence, okay? Fido, the dog, is sleeping. The burglar is tippy-toeing past the, the dog, goes into the house, breaks into the safe, steals the jewels, walks by Fido, who's still sleeping, goes through the, the, uh, the gate, Close to the gate, bam! The dog's like, woo, 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 woo. now, this is what happens. This is what an interferon is. The dog barking, okay, can't do anything with saving its own house. It's screwed up, all right? But the dog barking is going to alert other houses, neighboring houses, that there's a burglar around here at 3 o'clock in the morning. Why is the dog barking? They're going to turn on the lights and see what's going on. So the burglar now, if they go in, if he goes into one of their houses, he can't steal anything because the dog is sending interferons to these other houses alerting them so the and what an interferon does in if we don't use the analogy it interferes with <coughs> DNA replication in other cells remember how viruses work viruses if that's a cell a virus whatever it is okay has DNA or RNA in there. It's going to put it into the DNA of this cell here. Okay? It's kind of like this. If I have your test, I gotta make a thousand copies of it. I'm gonna put it right here. And then I want to get a drink over here. And then someone in your class decides to put in a little advertisement for a rock and roll party that's happening this weekend into my test. But I didn't see him do that. So I went to get my drink, I come back here, take the test, and I make a thousand copies. He incorporated his, his pitch, his, his advertisement into my DNA, and I made all these copies now, and he's getting free advertising. 
That's what's happening here, is that they're going to incorporate the DNA into my DNA, and then this cell is going to put out more of these viruses. Does that make sense? That's how viruses work. They incorporate it. In most cases, these the C cells burst after they make all these. Okay? That's what happens with that. So that's how viruses work. So what's happening with interferons, yes, the DNA can come inside here, but it's going to block to make sure that that DNA does not go into and gets incorporated into the nuclear DNA. That's what interferons do, okay? With the neighboring cells, all right? Questions about that? Okay. Complement system, we talked about the oil can, right? The opsonization, lysis, and inflammation. All the, uh, we talked about inflammation, um, the five cardinal signs, and then what happens with fever, okay? So So this is just a brief synopsis of that whole, whole thing. So we have exterior defenses, like I said, skin, cilia, commensual microorganisms. We have things where our body is going to uh, live with other things also. A symbiosis, so to say. In the mouth, we got loads of bacteria. On our skin, we got loads of bacteria. In the vagina, there's loads of bacteria. In the large intestines, there's loads of bacteria. They're living on us. And in a lot of cases, they are benefiting me, but they are also going to benefit themselves. Maybe they're going to help break, in, break down certain uh, substances and make vitamin K for myself. So I get that, and meanwhile, the bacteria can actually grow inside me. So it's kind of like, a, you know, you rub my back, I rub yours, right? That's what I mean by that. But sometimes what happens is, let's say in the vagina, we have, um, there's, there's a, a, a yeast that's grown in there. But we also have bacteria, and what's happening is the bacteria in the vagina is actually keeping the yeast down. So down that nothing's there, or it appears that there's nothing there. But what happens is, if, let's say, a woman douches a lot, all right? Douching is, is cleaning out the, the vagina, um, the vinegar and other things. Um, it's not encouraged to do that a lot. Maybe once a month, maybe right after your period, if you want to do that. But doing it, let's say, every day is going to kill the good bacteria, allowing the yeast to grow and grow and grow, and that would cause a yeast infection. Or if someone has taken a lot of antibiotics, it's going to decrease the bacteria, allowing the yeast infection to go up, right? So that's what I mean by com uh, commensal microorganisms. We are living with things, whether they're benefiting us or not, or maybe one person's benefit, or one part is benefiting and the other one's not. We'll go more into it when we get into infectious diseases. Okay. Um, and biochemical defenses, like I said, the stomach acid and so forth that we just mentioned. So these are all non-specific things, right? It's going to ward off other things, or good or bad things. We have phagocytic cells. Remember the word opsonin, right? Opsonization. Opsonin is anything that's going to enhance phagocytosis. Okay? And the complement system has a piece that comes off that will enhance that. So we need the complement system. So we have a few phagocytic cells you need to know, right? Neutrophils, right? Those are the first ones. That's the ambulance. That's the first people that are going to go to that, uh, to that area. So we have uh, neutrophils. They leave the blood during acute inflammation. We have monocytes. Monocytes are phagocytes that live in the bloodstream. It's kind of like the police patrolling the streets. So they're in the bloodstream, we're in the streets. They're keeping crime down, okay? But sometimes, you know, the commissioner will say, you know what, you guys are doing a wonderful job on the streets, crime is down. However, our local mall over here has too many burglaries going on. So I need you to leave the streets, leave the bloodstream, and I want you to be stationed at the mall now. So we have cells, monocytes, that leave the bloodstream, and now they're going to be living in tissue, and these are called macrophages. So monocytes are phagocytes, but so are macrophages. But macrophages are living in the tissue, and they have different names. Macrophages that are found in the brain are called microglia cells. 
Macrophages that are found in the lungs are called dust cells. Macrophages in the liver are called Kupfer cells. Macrophages in the uh, intestines are called Peyer's patches, and so forth. But they're all macrophages, and they're taking care of infections or any kind of uh, pathogens that are happening in those organs, right? Okay. And this is just showing you what phagocytosis is all about. Natural killer cells is a type of lymphocyte, the only lymphocyte that actually is part of this nonspecific or innate system. Okay? They will kill cancer cells, they will kill virus infected cells. How? They release, release these chemicals called perforins, think of perforation, perforins, and they will actually put <coughs> holes in those cells, just the way perforation is, right? And what will happen is when you perforate that cell, that will allow the fluid from the outside to go into the cell. Well, there's a lot of ions in there, too. You're changing the membrane potential of that cell so much that the cell is going to burst. And I'll show you that uh, in a few slides later on. Okay? Accessory cells. We have mast cells. Mast cells are non-motile cells um, that live in connective tissue. CT is connected tissue, okay? And they're going to release a number of different things. One of the things it's going to release is heparin. Heparin is going to be an anticoagulant. So in the area there's some kind of infection over there, we got to make sure that nothing's going to clot there. We've got to have a nice, it's like an ambulance is coming through, pull over to the side. We don't want a motor vehicle accident to happen over there and the things can't get through to where it needs to go. So we've got to make sure there's nice loose blood to get over there. It's also going to release histamine. Histamine is going to cause vasodilation. Now think about what's happening here. If someone has an allergy to pollen, right? You got a cold, right? Pollen comes in here. That has an antigen, and it's going to affect your body. So what will happen is the mast cells see this. It's going to release histamine, amongst other things. It's going to vasodilate the blood flow. I'm sorry, the, the, the blood vessels. That's going to bring more blood there, right? You open up the roads, more cars will go through. You will dilate the blood or the blood vessel, more, flu more blood will go there. So we need more white blood cells there. That's the main thing. Sure, more red blood cells will go there too. We've got a lot of action, so we need more oxygen. Red blood cells carry oxygen, so all the best. Let's get over there. You'll notice that the people who have these allergies have red noses, right? Because of this vasodilation. The blood vessels get closer to the surface of the skin, your nose appears red. It makes sense. Okay? <clears throat> the other thing it does is it's going to open up the, ca the capillaries, at least the endothelial so sides. So it's going to open it up, allow uh, capillary permeability to increase. So it's going to open it up, allow the white blood cells to squeeze on out into that area to where that antigen is, to do their thing. Problem is, as the white blood cells can squeeze out there, water is going to fall because it's open. You just open up a, you know, let, a holes over there so that water can go through. And as water creeps on out there, you start talking like this. Because all of that extra fluid that's over there. Right? Does that make sense? Right? Right? So when that happens, if you have this allergy, what do you think you have to give yourself for medication so that you don't talk like that? Yeah. Antihistamine. The antihistamine will cause this to go back to vasoconstrict. This, the fluid won't go out. Does that make sense? Right? They also can, and some of these cold remedies also have another medication called pseudoepinephrine. Okay? Sometimes epinephrine's in there, and that's why these cold remedies are now found behind the counter. Because a lot of kids can make the mess and things like that, cut it down and stuff. Meanwhile, I could go to the aisle where there's rubber cement and sniff that. I mean, like, soon that'll be behind the counter. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, so that's what's happened. So you get to so you see epinephrine. What does epinephrine do to to, uh, to blood vessels? Constricts it. Good, good. It constricts it. All right. So what you're going to do if you so you could get a cold remedy, some kind of. Um, uh, cold remedy, whatever, cold medicine. And what will happen is you'll have an antihistamine in there, but sometimes you'll see 
I like what it having, I like the double whammy. I like the antihistamine and for it to also have pseudoepinephrine. So not only is it going to inhibit vasodilation and inhibit uh, the capillary permeability, but now you get epinephrine, so you're going to have this doing even more vasoconstriction. And that could dry out your nose. That's why sometimes it gets too dry, because you're really doing too much. That's what causes that. Okay? So again, I won't ask you questions about epinephrine, you know, in, in terms of that. But you, what I'm trying to show you is don't forget this stuff, because I already know what you need to know for pharmacology. So the stuff you're going to learn here, you're going to need to apply for pharmacology. Okay, don't worry, you know, don't forget the stuff after 15 weeks. All right, you're going to use this stuff later. All right, and it releases platinum, these other things over here too. Okay, um, we have basophils, which do the same exact thing as mast cells, but these are found in the bloodstream. Okay, I don't want you to get confused though, is that monocytes are in the bloodstream and they change into macrophages that are in the connective tissue. In this case, mast cells are just in the connective tissue. Basal cells are just in the bloodstream. But basal cells don't turn into mast cells, whereas monocytes turn into macrophages. All right, so don't, they're similar in that way, but it doesn't, they don't change into that. Okay? Eosinophils, right, another white blood cell. These engulf, so these are macrophages, these engulf and kill microbes, especially parasitic worms. But I know if I see an increase, and this is why I want you to know percentage ranges on the white blood cells, because if I see an increased uh, percentage of eosinophils, then I already have an idea that this person probably has some kind of parasitic worms in it. However, we also see eosinophils go up during allergies. Not to fight allergies, but to make sure that the allergy does not become hypersensitive, that it doesn't get overwhelming. So it actually will inhibit the immune response. It'll cut it down so that it doesn't. So there is some thought to this. People who have allergies may have something wrong with their eosinophils. But we'll, we'll talk about this. It could be also suppressor T cells too. All right? That's what's going on over here. So it inhibits the immune system so it doesn't become overactive. Okay? Antigen-presenting cells. Okay? This, what this does is that the, the cell macrophage or cell, is an antigen presenting cell, they're going to break up whatever they engulf, and normally you would think that, well, break it up and then just throw it into the garbage. Basically, yeah, there's a way to do it. It's called pus, and that's what's happening. But they do take a piece of it, and they put it on the cell membrane, and they present it to the adaptive system. There's a connection going on here, all right? It's basically what the master does is his words talking to the, or picking up the phone and presenting his story to the dispatcher. You've got to have that connection between the two, okay? And that's what an antigen-presenting antigen cell is. So we have four different ones. Langerhans cells, dendritic cells, B cells, and macrophages. They're all considered and doing this, presented to different things but they're all considered antigen-presenting cells, okay? This is the bridge between the, uh, the innate immune system and the adaptive immune system, right? So you have this macrophage or antigen-presenting cell, breaks up the bacteria, but there's going to be a little piece of it sticking out so that our immune system, our required immune system, can see it and know what to do. This little message will tell what to do. This is a good guy. You want these big G.I. Joe guys on our team in the Army, right? You want these big, hefty guys to do their thing. He looks mean, but that's what we need to beat those bacteria. We want some mean guys on our team, right? All right, so we have a list of soluble mediators, chemicals that get, that get released, all right? So we have the complement system, right? That's our opposite. It releases things for opsonization, enhancing phagocytosis, inflammation, and lysis. That's why I call it the oil. Right, O I L. Okay. We also have a bunch of cytokines that come out. If the cytokine comes from a macrophage, it's called a monokine. If, if it comes out of a T cell or B cell, which are lymphocytes, they're called lymphokines. So these are small proteins we give off as signals, and we'll go through some of those. Okay. So there's our can of oil from our complement can of oil, right? 
and it does optimization, inflammation, and license. You can read that on your own. Um, so these are some cytokines you need to know, right? Interferons, we already talked about the dog uh, barking, warning the other neighboring houses that there's a burglar around. Tuber necrosis factors. Um, these are factors that come out that will try to necrose or kill some of the can uh, cancer, okay, that, that's growing. When we get into cancer, we'll talk more about that. Colony, uh, colony uh, stimulating factors, uh, like erythropoietin is a hormone, all right? I'm just, it's, it's not so much a cytokine over here, but just giving an example of a, college, uh, a colony stimulating factor. Erythropoietin is a hormone that comes out of the kidney and will make more red blood cells, all right? That's what I mean, colony, uh, colony stimulating factors. It's going to make more of something else, and we'll talk about those in a bit. Interleukins, there's about 40 different interleukins. I only want you to know one through five, um, so when you get your A and P book, you can go over which ones are one through five. Those are the ones that will pop up, but I'll go over a couple. Uh, you got the C-reactive protein, kinase, and uh, leukotrienes also. So these are all chemicals as signals that come out. Inflammation, there's your five cardinal signs, and you got your pillar with the uh, five cardinal signs. You did that already. 